podcast on Magistry uh, TV that was on Impact Network and to all those who commented and to those who have purchased books uh, all the way to Oklahoma, Oklahoma City and across the nation. We thank you for joining us and watching and I would always like to say that please go to our website www.houseofreconciliation.org uh, we have a virtual campus on there. You can become a member of that or a partner of that, and you can share, uh, you can watch the program. I think there's links, of course, on social media, and we appreciate all of your support. I said this, uh, let's see when, I think it may have been the last time that I was up, maybe Sunday, and I think part of it got cut off. But in 2022, as we're looking forward to uh, growing and knowing in 2022 with Connect, Serve, and Grow is that we're open in a multicultural type worship center. So we are asking our uh, Latino uh, brothers and sisters who do gospel worship, also urban, uh, those that do urban worship, and also those that do country. Please come, contact us. We'd love to have you be a part of our uh, praise and worship as well as the flag ministry that we have. I don't know if anybody is doing mind ministry anymore, but that is something that I think when you have the arts in the ministry as have them as, as a great part of worship, it is tremendous. So there are some wonderful opportunities to be a part as we grow in 2022. So I want to wish all of you a very Merry Christmas and Happy Holiday and as we go into uh, looking for a new year. So we've been talking in the winter series about purpose over people. And we began to talk about, first of all, purpose over me and having issues within myself or within an individual self. And then we began now in the middle of the road working on purpose over a person. So we're, that's where we at. We started kind of and brought it up to self-manipulation. And now we're looking at the text of people manipulation. And so what we want to do is dabble into that a little bit. We kind of talked about sitting on a sinking and stinking ship. Me versus me. If you don't jump, it will drown you. Middle of the road, divided mind, the voices and spirits in my head. Our base scriptorials, scriptures will come out of Proverbs 11 and 1, uh, also James 1 and 8, and there is an additional one that comes out of, I believe, Matthew, the 13th chapter, and verse 28 in the New Living Translation. You can read these at your convenience, but here is how this evening we want to go into this particular part. As you and I begin to try to prepare ourselves, close out 2021, we're hoping that we were at the end of the pandemic and in many instances look like we're still having some variants of the pandemic. But I want you to know how valuable you are because the adversary would not be attacking you and your family and your loved ones and your friends if you didn't have purpose. And the key word of all of this is I met with a group today and we talked literally about finding your purpose. And normally in the same block of your purpose on the corner is your passion. You literally have a passion. And when you don't know your passion you can be consumed by other things as well as find yourself empty of the things that you need. So we got to realize the objective of the adversary is to distort the truth. Now this next word is important to you and I moving forward. The objective of the adversary is to distort the truth by presentation. You have to be careful with your sight because there are people that you will see them and think that they are doing something or at a particular place and your desire to be there. It's human nature. But totally unaware, it's a trap. 
So, sight and hearing. You have to be careful. We talked about the movie uh, that's been out for probably 20 years, Shrek, and how that Shrek heard the third part of the conversation, and he didn't hear the entire conversation. So he moved with his feelings and emotions. Then he became off-centered and went and got the prince and then had to fight back for what he had. So it brings us to where we are in this part of the winner series, Purpose Over People. People manipulation, dealing and accepting and understanding my own reality. Now, when you or I decide to follow and seek out what am I passionate about, which means that my heart gets to racing and I'm excited to participate, whether it's helping youth, like right about now, there's a lot of um, angel tree and things like that are going on. That may be your passion, and what you have to do is learn how to upscale that passion. And then if you do it for free, then you can make money doing it. So there's all kind of variants that can be. And understanding my own reality. As long as you or I or whoever, those that are viewing for the virtual campus, those that are joining us from the Greenville campus, as long as we ignore our own reality, we will never deal and address our issues and get better. So what happens is we, we have the conversation, then why am I stuck in my struggle in life? But my mind tells me I'm not stuck. We're going to get into a little bit of the meat of this here in the next 20 minutes. Here's where it begins. The things people say and put in your head about what you can and can't do and about whatever your ethnicity is or isn't. All trouble begins in the mind. And when the other senses sees us and hears this or see an example of it, it becomes a trigger point. And you will accept something that you don't even believe in yourself. This is what it says. You had a purpose before anyone had an opinion in your life. I'll say it again. It doesn't matter your age. It doesn't matter where you're from. When you were created and born and placed on this earth in the hands of your mother and your father, there was a inherited purpose in you. Here's the problem. No one has ever told the majority of the people you have to seek for it. It's not coming in your sight. Because what's in your sight may not be who you are. You may not be what your father was. You may not be what your mother was. You may not be what your grandfather was. My grandfather wore a size 22 tennis shoe. And you know back in the 80s and 70s, that was hard to find. My grandfather's hands were big as a, uh, a catcher's mitt in baseball. You may not be what your family is, but it doesn't mean that you don't belong in that family. And please write this down. Many people that are watching and will see this throughout the time of the course of this year and going into 22, you have a hidden inheritance, a hidden natural inheritance. You are not what they told you you were or wasn't. What was our topic tonight? Because I don't think I wrote it down. Right. I, of course, I told you I'd get it right out here and be like, oh, oh, what, what, what was it? Who trapped me? 
Who? Many people had a dream when they were a kid and somebody killed it. You're no different than who they wrote about Joseph. See, you get these dreams when you're young because you're supposed to, someone's supposed to, and I'm going to get to that, someone's supposed to nurture them and help you and guide you, but because it's not familiar. So your gift and talent may not be familiar to your family, may not be familiar to your culture, it may not be familiar to those that you're around. And most of the time, your most, your most, your best gifts are the gifts you don't like. So here we go. Who trapped me? The things people say and put in your head and in your sight. How can you control 10,000 people with a stick. Now you can scale it up if you want to. That's on you. That's not, that's not me. How? Because you take one or two and you disassemble them or you belittle them and because of sight, sight can make you fear. They have one stick, three bullets, and that's what they are right there. I don't know if our audience can see that. Do we have a, oh, our audience? Well, glad we we're, were getting up here. That's how your enemy. See, <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. The enemy gets rewards when you don't work your gifts. And you don't develop your gift. So this is how every adversary, every enemy, seen and unseen, spiritual and natural, they come to devour you with doubt and criticism. They shower you with this thing, sight, and they cause confusion. When I talk to people about his or her or their opportunities, you, you know what comes up? Well, I ain't got the time. This is right here. This is a danger point. Please put that one. This, because what they do, they come to deposit things. And you never go foul for withdrawal. They deposit stuff in you. Because if they can deposit something in you, friend, foe, or family, then you're not competition and you won't get the best out of you. You will work beneath what God has given you. These are the spirits and the voices that go in people's head. It is a trap to sit down and watch entertainment all day and play games all day and never work on your future. It's a shame that people can write and read and read and write and never write a plan. And the Bible says write the vision and make it plain. When was the last time you made a list and said, this is what I'm going to do, and didn't leave the list in the office like I do? I'm going to write down these five things that I'm going to do and do none of them. You know why? Because the things that people say and put in our head. And here's the whole point. You know when the best time to do it? It's when you're young and innocent. See, I don't mind sharing my story with people because as I go through here, uh, most lessons are still reflected of something, hopefully, that you've experienced. My biggest thing, and you know this is my home. This, is, this, is, this, 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 this church, this ministry has birthed so many other ministries and so many things, and all of my life of being in church 
it was always judgment, criticism, and there was one common theme. It wasn't just this location, but it really came from the second location. And I know many of them watch, and God knows I love y'all. And there's some talent and gifts in there that I'm beginning to work with. You know what the best thing people told me? Don't get the big head. Now, I'm 60 and bald, wearing glasses, getting implants and crowns and teeth put in so they don't separate and I be spitting on you and, and raggly. And finally, at the age of 60, I'm going to give you some things here to let you know. You cannot buy into what everybody tell you. Now, this is going to be tough, even if they church folks. Now, they don't mean no harm. But sometimes people don't know what to say to you. Because sight, can I really teach this? I feel this in my spirit, but I'm, I'm not trying to be in here until 9 o'clock tonight. <laughs> as uh, uh, Sister Carolyn, as you would be sitting here watching, people say, if that left leg starts shaking, you know it's about to be on. My left leg been shaking the whole time. I didn't know that till y'all observed that. That left leg get to shaking, boy. It's about to <laughs> Two, three little things. He said the whole villain on fire. I'm not trying to set the villain on fire tonight, but it's, I just feel the weight and the heaviness of helping you and helping the audience. Uh, there are people that their intentions is to confuse you. And I really want you to talk to me here in brief. We got about 20 minutes together. Ask me why. They see in you what they don't have in themselves. See, many of the people that bring confusion to you are people that don't have your gifts. And mainly, you may dislike your gift. You may hate your gift. I, I don't know. But they don't never show you how to harness your gift. Uh, what does that say? Uh, uh, they create this. I can see it now. Self-doubt. I want you to write that. Self-doubt causes you to what? Trap yourself inside of your own mind. Self-doubt. When you doubt yourself, you quit trying. Can I show you the language of a doubt? Oh, oh, I didn't know. Oh, well, maybe. Well, you think so? Well, you stop getting power. Stop letting people have power over your life. Self-doubt. Once they're able to set that benchmark in your head, Guess what comes next? Three things. Pain, discomfort, and dysfunction. Self-doubt. When people can get you to listen to them and, and, and now you're looking for his or her acceptance or okay to do this, you have just weakened your gifts and your talents. Because the Bible says God is not the author of confusion, but because you can do. Let's see, I'm not a baker. Never really tried. But let's say you are. But because I see how other people bringing you money and purchasing your stuff, there's a jealous spirit get up in a person. People going to you, you getting attention. So I'm a pause in you and create self-doubt in your own mind. There are many people that should be in school now. Yeah, you went to school and took the wrong course, but that wasn't meant for you to quit school. You still got to go back. And I have it down, but we won't get to it tonight. Maybe by Sunday, because I'll be on the floor on Sunday. Maybe we'll get to it on Sunday. And I'm going to give you some things. The reason that education is critical and, 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 and critical to, to your next move, because if you don't know what to do, then that means more predators will take you. Put the, fox, the wolf back up there. That means more predators can take advantage of you. So now, <clears throat> these three things, pain and discomfort and dysfunction. This is what confusion calls. But if you look at the wolf, 
you think he's looking at somebody else, but he's really looking at you. Because if he can devour your gifts and your talents and your anointing and your inheritance, your natural inheritance, he looks back at God and says, I've eaten up what you have put out to grow. I have eaten them, and by eating them with pain, discomfort, and dysfunction, I have created confusion, and they won't grow. It is a sin not to use your gifts and let God bless you when he said in the Old Testament that I will bless your hands. And your hands will bring you profit. God is offended when we're confused, in pain, discomfort, and doubt. And here is the kicker. God sends a messenger. Whether it's Naaman, whether it's your brother, whether it's your sister, whether it's by way of um, uh, social media, here is what happens, and I want you to write this. We always take it personal. I have people put me up, I'm, I forgot about this. I have people right now that I love and I care about and they have been a great asset to this ministry. And I want you that know them to tag them and say, this is from passing. Now they can get mad and cuss me out and say whatever they wanna say. It ain't nothing new, <laughs> it ain't nothing new. But I want them to know that I love them and I want you to put hashtag formal member new member, potential member, old member, member sitting at home, hashtag. Pastor loves you. I didn't get to where I was and get to national television on Sunday night without you. All of you that are home, all of you that left for whatever reason that you left or blamed it on the pandemic or blamed it on you didn't like my attitude, whatever, whatever, I, whatever it is. And, and this is what I'm saying to you as your pastor. 2022 is too big for you and I not to work together. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get there. It's up to you if you want to go with me. I'm not that saved, but I don't hold grudges. I don't have a reason to talk about the past. Former member, member sitting at home, virtual member. Uh, there are people that have been scoping us out for six and seven months. I need you to come and be a part of the broadcast. I need you to come and be a part of the ministry. I need you to get out of pain, discomfort, and dysfunction and confusion and come and grow with us. 2022, the Lord's going to do tremendous things, not because I said it, but you, the other side of suffering is greatness. And we have, have, have invested almost two and a half years in pain and suffering. There, there ain't no way in the world if Michael Jordan asked me to be on his basketball team, I wouldn't take these old 60-year-old knees and go get some emus and put on them and get out there with some ointment and try to at least be on the field. I told someone I was watching a football game and they were playing so bad, I said, they can give me a set of tights. I can go out there and at least get knocked down and get some money for the church so I can build a church. If they're going to play that bad, and they was like some tights, why not coaching? I'm like, I pull them all the way up. You know how old people pull them all the way up. Get me some old tights uh, and let me get on the field. Won't know the play. I said, because they know the play and can't run the play. Let me get on the field. So this is my, uh, my time to say to you, and, and hashtag them. You can text them and say, pastor said, your former pastor said, you need to look at this bar. I didn't get to where I got to. This took over 14 years. Uh, plus and it's everything that you sold into and was a tremendous sore teammate partner grower supporter all of that I'm, I'm not mad. life is too big to be carrying grudges and mad and and pouting over words and well you didn't say nothing to me and you said something hard you stick around me you're gonna hear something hard now I, I don't want to run nobody off but y'all come on and tell the truth if you stick around me, I am never here to hurt you. But truth sometimes don't come out the right way out of my mouth. And I own that. Am I right? I've had family in the church. Like, he don't even treat us like we family. He just be like, yeah, 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 let's do this. And yeah, he ain't nice. I am nice. I'm on a mission. 
And the more you do, the less you have to deal with me. That ought to be a good deal for somebody. <laughs> but I'm just saying, so I didn't get to where I was. I, I didn't get the calls I got today about certain opportunities and, and things that may come about. I didn't get there by myself. And what I need is people that I can trust. People that I, you know, new people, nice. But old people say, you got to get to keep your good eye on them. You know how they look sideways. You got to get your good eye on them because, you know, I don't know them like that. But I love all of you. I wish all of you a Merry Christmas wherever you are in your life. If you're happy and you're growing spiritually, I'm not angry and upset. But I don't want you to think I have any grudges and we got anything to talk about. And in this week and this day, anything else we got to talk about is Jesus is Lord and how can we move the ministry forward. So hashtag him and call him and tell him, Pastor, talking about you. He, he, you can even say he called your name on the broadcast. Because if you're at home, you know, you, l listen, let, l let, me, let me step in my pastor's row. You can leave the ministry, but that don't mean that God gave you permission to go. That's a whole lot of times I wanted to run away from my grandma. I'm tired of her and tired of y'all. So I learned because I came back and I got over people and I started doing the work of the Lord and I work for God and not the pastor. God has blessed. And I don't want you to miss your blessing because I love all of you. I thank you for all of your faithfulness and those that are part of the virtual campus who contribute financially. We have been fortunate to, to really renovate again uh, the entire church, the front of the church, the exterior of the church. And that's all because of you, all because of your giving, all because of your support. So here's where it gets tough. We always take it personal and never constructive. I want you to write this. When people are trying to give us new information, ask me what new information does. It gives you new direction. But if you take everything personal, listen, if anybody should be getting their eyes rolled at, it should be me. Because most of you all have never lived the life that I've lived, I've overcome, I tell people all the time, I don't hide my past, backslidden, backslidden preacher. Been preaching since I was eight, ordained early on in my teens. I have not always been the perfect model. So when people talk trash about me, it ain't nothing new. But God can change you. So my grandmother never gave up on me. So it's hard for me to give up on people because sometimes you have to grow and you have to change. I'm not one of those people that I ever get wherever I'm getting and act like, oh, my life was never with, without scars and failure. That's what made, that's what my experience turned into wisdom. And so choices that I made before, I wouldn't make now. Yes, ma'am. put the opinion back up. You, you know why? Can I tell you a secret? It's a lot easier to tell on yourself than let others tell on you. Then you got to defend what they told. Just tell on yourself. Just tell people. Yeah, divorce. Yeah, I fell. Yes, got a daughter. I was about to say I had a son, but I don't have one. I got a, a son, my, my son that I, because people always act like I got another four kid out there. I ain't got but three. Because y'all stop that lie right now. I know we lied, but I'm just, I'm, I, ain't nothing about me changed. National TV are down here in Hodges. I have one son and two daughters. All right? See, when you own it, put the wolf up. You take his teeth out. Okay? Now, can I give you an inside secret? When they say it, don't defend nothing. Whether it's a lie or the truth, this is what you say. Yes, but look at what God is doing now. I'm not perfect, but I'm better. Because one of the biggest tricks of the enemy is to get you to deny your experience and your past. 
Broken people don't need perfect people. Broken people need people that are trying to get better. It's hard to help an addict when you don't understand how the mind of an addict works. So your pain becomes experience and wisdom to help somebody else. Don't hide it. Don't hide. People talk about me. And, and, and I, I'll say it, and I love her to death, and I text her. My, my youngest daughter, well, both of my daughters, people say look just like me. I'm just not light-skinned like my oldest daughter. But they say, and she'll tell me, and they both uh, tell me off and say, yeah, we know we're your child. I'm like, how you know? They're like, we ain't got no eyebrows or no eyelashes. And our eyes are made just like yours, so you messed us up. <laughs> my youngest daughter look more like me than anything. <laughs> and, cause, you know, and people will say, oh, you know, you got a baby. No, I don't. I don't have a baby. I got a 26-year-old, wonderful, beautiful, single daughter. That's what I got. And, and so when you're able to tell the truth on yourself, you take the teeth out of the enemy's bite. Because people will whisper, oh, you know, he will back. So I, and I'll say this. My roots are apostolic, Pentecostal, and holiness. That's where I come from, and that's how they think. They will blast you if they know something on your life. Blasphemy. Listen. I sat on the backsliders pew for over 20 years in an apostolic Pentecostal hole in this church. So don't tell me that you can't overcome. And my greatest relief was owning it. And I tell people, look at God now. That same dude with them snack of teeth and all that sin, God put him on national television. That same one. I'm not one of those that was born in the manger and never had anything and, oh, God, been saved my whole life. No, that ain't me. So own it. Because, see, when you do it, you flip the switch on the enemy. Because can't nobody tell a story like you, especially when they say, well, she said she did that, so what, what's, your, what's the problem with you? And he said that God is restoring and recovering his life. So what, what's your they don't have much to talk about then. Because when you try to hide it, they dig for it a lot more. But when you own it. You know, I'm honest. I hate my gift, but it's my gift. I got to use it. I'm on parole. I'm too old now to be cutting up and acting a fool. Then God kill me. I'm like, dude, look here. <laughs> I'm, trying to, I'm trying to enjoy, if I made a penny, I'm trying to enjoy a fraction of it. I'm not trying to die being stupid and mad at God and I ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. We always take it personal and never constructive. And that's a beautiful point you make. Just free yourself of it. God has forgiven you. And God's going to forgive you for what happens next. See, the problem is people won't forgive you. They are hold something against you forever. Well, here's what the Bible says. Ye that are spiritual, restore such a one. Least ye fall in the same like matter. I preached, and this is just real talk with real people. I preached at the second church. And, and, and see, you all know when I was a backslider, my grandmother didn't send me immediately back to Greenville. Greenville got some of y'all in here talk and say, how they are preaching again? And then my uncle Joe, I heard he preaching better than when he was in the church. I should be. I done been through some crap. And so then I remember the day, the first time I went back and, and they actually literally preached at Great Emmanuel, is they were having platform service. Church was full. And Suda Bell Clinscale, you always got that one gonna tell everything. We had all those people in that church, and she went over there. Bah, bah. And you know, my grandmother, she didn't know how to mute the mic. She told my he's here in the building. Yeah, and we, and we heard he preaching again. Now, mind you, people up preaching and, you know, enjoying Jesus and all that. And I'm sitting over on the side because uh, I just got elevated from the backslide dispute. Now, if y'all ever stop. Y'all laughing. It's okay to laugh. If, yeah, if, if any of you out there are a former apostolic Pentecostal holiness people, you know exactly what I'm talking about. They got, don't y'all look. Y'all know it's a backslide of people. 
I had just got off the backslide of pew, so I was sitting over in the musician department, and I had slid in the door, but somebody always got their eye on you. And so the whole church, uh, you could hear a pin drop when my grandmother called my name. She said, I see you. I said, no, they're like, how she know I'm in the building? She way on the other side, five preachers in between us, deacons, all that. I said, yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Won't you get up and close it out? <laughs> Me? <laughs> the bachelor and preacher? Me? Divorce? Me? Come on, let's get real. Baby out of wedlock? They don't have, they don't, don't, don't nobody know what that is nowadays. Y'all know what it is. And you asking me, a broken vessel, to step back in the pulpit that you all shut the doors on. That's why I say own it. Own it. Own it. That's why I'm so heavily anointed. I own it. Because if God does not touch my anointing, I ain't worried about man. I worry about my arthritis more than I worry about my kids. Because they're going to talk about me, cuss me out. They're going to say all kind of stuff. I just, Lord, if you keep your hands on me, I will bless your people till you're done with me. Because, see, this is the thing I tell people. When you come back to God, you come back to church, don't come back for me. Don't come back for people. Don't come back because your cousin in the church or your sister go to that church. You come back for God. And you tell God, listen, I don't owe nobody nothing but you. You've allowed me to live while I was undecided what I was going to do, how I was going to do it, what I was going to do. And, and send it to them. Hashtag them and tell them. And if they mad at me, they can cuss me out. It ain't the first time people cuss me out. And I know. And people are like, oh, my God, you are. A bit. People call me bishop. People call me elder. People call me pastor. Whatever. I want you to know. 22 is the time for us to move on. It's time for us to come together, unite together, forgive whatever. I've already, I, I, I never felt like I, I had to forgive you because if I wronged you, I asked God to forgive me and I asked you to forgive me. And, if, and the Bible said, if you think you've wronged somebody, just, just do it. Yeah, you can hold on. We're going to talk just about five more minutes. I, I have to give you this. I'm learning how to give points. We always take it personal. I'm going to give you something. When you take it personal and encounter what you were asking there, sis, uh, when people are trying to give us new information, take new information because it gives you new direction. I love all of you. Love your kids. Love your family. Love the ones that we prayed to be born. Whoever you are, God loves you. If you're out there and you're still measuring us and listening and, you know, you like the talk that I had with the clinical psychologist about bodies in the basement, come on, be a part. Come on, be a part. Let us unite. And as Caesar says, one eight. You can break. Apes work together. You can't break. Now we're not apes, but I'm just using that as an analysis because there'd be somebody that he called us on monkeys. No, no. <laughs> you know, I'm not going. I'm gonna leave that one alone. Trust issues and insecurities. Other voices get trapped in our head. Number one. This is what you and I, as you get ready to close out, and I get ready to close out 2021, is ask God, and if you could, put the voices and the spirits in the head. Ask God to help us get the voices that are trapped in our head out. And it's easy to say, say this, God, I need room for you. If you're part and you're watching, just, God, I need room for you. Number two, learn to stay at an even pace. Meaning, don't let someone make you speed up your pace. Be smart about what you do and when you do it. Learn to stay even pace. In other words, old folks say don't get ahead of yourself. Don't get caught up looking at the big picture. Number three, and not the infrastructure. In other words, quit living off of what they said. Get the facts, get the details, use your intellect and intelligence. Number three, 
Don't be driven by the big picture. Stay with the infrastructure. You will approach life better with balance. Number four. You ready? Don't buy the hype that's used by other people because sometimes they want to deposit something that will hinder your growth. So now, if you're going to pray and ask God to get things out of your head, these are the things we need to get in our head, and it's only four of them, and they're very short. Here is what we need. Number one, trust and belief equals allowing God and the people that he will assign to your life to guide you. Again, number one, this is what we need. So when we're asking God to, Lord, I need room for you. Well, when you push these things out and finally get over them, and this don't happen between now and January the 1st, this is going to take a minute. You're going to have to trust and believe. And God is going to send a word or he may have someone mentor you that can guide you. And if you don't trust, you won't trust who God is sending to take you to be a better person. Number two, build a team that will encourage you. Because in this new phase of your life, there will be challenges. And if you don't trust and you don't believe and you don't have confidence in who God is using to guide you, because really they're coming to stretch you because fear makes you draw in. So then you're going to need to be encouraged. You get your encouragement through fellowship, through worship, and the Word of God. And if you ask God to keep you centered, this is all a part of number two, then He will. You ready for, what is it, number three? You are to acquire tools. That can be a tool of education, certification, experience. You have, once you've been encouraged, now you have to inquire the skills. You have to inquire the tools. What are you gonna need to be at that next level? You're gonna need some tools, financial resources. Number four, only listen to ongoing support. You're going to need to trust and believe, number one, and trust that God will send something or someone to help God. Then you need a team of people who are open and honest to encourage you. The backside of that, you have to leave negative people alone. You have to leave people who are always kicking and downing and criticizing everything. Number three, you're gonna have to get some tools. You're gonna have to show God some actions. You're gonna have to invest you're going to have to level up, buckle down, get recertified, take the test you skipped over for five years. Number four, 
ongoing support. And that support will come when they will say, you know, hey, this is out there. This is out there. This is uh, what's going on. This is an opportunity for you. I if you don't trust and you don't believe, you will drown. Twenty twenty two is not the time to continue to sit in the corner and watch life pass you by. Ongoing support, people and, and things, and it, it can be right now, most people have smartphones. It could be something positive every morning that pops up at nine o'clock or eight o'clock when your feet hit the floor and it says to you, Make this a great day. Not mess that Quita and Willie been fighting outside all morning because he caught Skeet over at the house again. That ain't no mess. That ain't nothing nobody want to hear about. But messy people. Lord, did they get to fighting? That ain't my kind of group. Any questions? Did that help you? Okay, you can put me back up, Hope. As I close and wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holiday and New Year, God bless you. We look forward to seeing you on Sunday. If you're a part of our team, we love you. We miss you. If you want to be a part of our team, don't hesitate to get in contact with us. I think we have all kind of lower thirds, and you can hit us up on social media. Uh, we will be, if everything goes according to plan, in Greenville tomorrow and do another broadcast. If you're in the surrounding areas, please don't hesitate. Come out, be a part of our broadcast, have conversation. I think first Sunday we will have, what is it, uh, tea and coffee. So we have this Sunday coming up for Sunday. Thank all of you. Thank you for listening to the broadcast. Thank you for your support this year. It has been a tremendous year, and I believe that God would do great things for this ministry, House of Reconciliation and Greenwood. We have the Greenville campus and to our virtual campus. God bless you all and have a wonderful evening. Thank you.